Good evening and welcome to another episode of uh, Business Today, a program on Channel Arup Wahini where we discuss uh, business matters related locally and globally on Channel I Rupa Wahini. We do bring business personalities on uh, business uh, today. And let's go and see who our business personality today is. Shamindra Masali, with 23 years of multifaceted experience in corporate and global banking, investment banking, retail banking, credit administration and operations management. Experience in product development, advisory, structuring and financing, credit administration and operations relating to the branch and cross-border business within HSBC group entities. Expertise in designing and implementing new business initiative systems, procedures to enhance the overall efficiency of the organization in line with corporate business goals. Shamindra currently serves as the Director of People's Insurance PLC, People's Leasing Fleet Management Limited, People's Leasing Property Development Limited, People's Leasing Havelock Properties Limited, People's Microcommerce Limited, and Lankan Airlines Finance Limited. Bangladesh. Well, our business personality today is uh, Mr. Shamindra Masalin. He's uh, the uh, General Manager and Chief Executive Officer of People's Leasing and Finance PLC. Good evening to you. Thank you, Kosala. Yeah. Good evening to you too. Yeah. So, first of all, you come to the People's Leasing at a very crucial time, just during the outbreak, and from uh, a private banking sector. How challenging has it been, first of all? Now you put me on a spot. <laughs> uh, Kosala, actually, uh, I don't find it challenging. I've been in situations where I have faced bigger challenges. I believe that uh, one cannot think that, uh, you know, this is only the challenge that you're faced with. Uh, having worked for a bank, uh, international bank, which basically uh, has uh, groomed me and brought me to this position I have faced uh, many challenges so I think uh, it's a it's a nice challenge to have it's something very different that we are all faced with I'm not alone in this challenge this is a global challenge mm -hmm. and uh, I think uh, the, the 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 opportunity now is there to uh, come out of it so that's what we're all working towards and that's what I'm basically thriving in to come out of this and then drive the company to uh, the next level of business that we want to get to. Well, uh, we, during the pandemic, also People's Leasing has been a, a company uh, where it's been uh, leasing uh, towards uh, the uh, strategic uh, transformation. How, how have you been handling it, especially during this uh, pandemic? Okay. Because for almost one and a half years, things have been not moving the proper way. Good question. I think I'll just put a few things in context. People's Leasing is a 25-year business. We commenced our operations in 1995. So this is in fact our jubilee year. Uh, it's a company which is built on passion. Uh, it's a company which has great people. We have a blend of experience and youth. And I believe um, that that has helped us to face the pandemic and the fallout of it. Uh, you know, quite, uh, uh, I mean, rather e with, with strength. What have we done differently from a little office that we started with three people over the years? We become one of the leading NBFI players in the market, non-bank financial institutions. And we focus a lot on digitalization. So this pandemic started around, I think, March 2020. And since then, we've been through this now almost one and a half years. And it has brought many lessons to the table. So what we've done is throughout the various waves of the pandemic that we faced, we've invested a lot in our digitalization process. We looked at running a very smart operation and that has helped us to come through this. Now, despite all of the challenges, I must I mean, tell you that uh, we recorded one of our best financial years. Our financial year ends as a 31st March every year and that just shows the commitment and the passion that the team has. 
Uh, what are we doing differently? Uh, as I said, digitalization is an area that we are really focusing on. Uh, and uh, looking to be nimble, looking to be agile in the way we you know, carry out our business. So smart office concept is uh, one area that we focus on. And I can, I mean, basically go on and on. I mean, it's basically a, a combination of a lot of things. I can't spell out all of it because then my competitors will take, uh, <laughs> you know, cue from this and probably be better than us tomorrow. Nevertheless, uh, I believe that uh, to face the challenges, uh, we've invested well. And the results of this will be seen in a few months, if not a year or so, because you don't expect results to come through immediately. Um, and uh, it's a combination of infrastructure that we basically gone into, uh, our branch network, right sizing it, recalibrating the workforce, allowing them to work from home. I'm proud to say as a semi-government uh, institution, because we have a 75% uh, you know, ownership of People's Bank and the balance 25% is listed on the stock exchange. Uh, we today are a company that 60% of the workforce can work from home. And when I say work from home, run their end-to-end -end operations. So we enable them with laptops and all the other infrastructure that they need to work with, which I believe no other government institution can today, you know, I mean, uh, put their hand up and say that they are in a situation like, or rather they're in a position as we are. So that has helped us to come through this process. And we believe that with all the other investments we are making, we are making investments in partnering uh, digital or digitally enabled companies to allow us to basically operate in a bigger environment uh, and that you will see the results coming through in the next month or so with the announcements. We've invested in our own app. We have a fantastic online platform. So all of this has helped us to serve the customer. Customer centricity is a focus area and they have also now started to basically use those channels which has helped us because no longer do you see customers walking through the doors now you know i mean this has basically given them the opportunity to also transact more efficiently so we are ready for that and in the next few months or so we'll be better off from where we are today all right uh, people's leasing has been one of the main uh, service providers uh, financial service providers for the uh, nation uh, what is the vision uh, that you would have for the next decade especially coming in from as you said the new normal way well as a company, as a leading institution in the financial space, we will definitely want to consolidate ourselves further. And we also want to look at ourselves from a regional, international connectivity point of view. One of our subsidiaries is based in Bangladesh. As you know, Bangladesh is another growing economy. And we feel that we can leverage off that to build our platform uh, to you know the other regional uh, you know I mean countries that are in and around Sri Lanka uh, we also feel that we have some of the subsidiaries we have have yet not reached its true potential we have a microfinance arm that can do much more so we are revisiting and reviewing that entire operation so all of this is to basically focus on SME focus on areas such as IT healthcare education agriculture which we feel are the growth areas uh, for the next decade or so. So we will make products more efficient, products more conducive towards those sectors. And also don't forget the women's sector. That's a area which I think uh, a lot of us need to focus on because they contribute immensely to the country. During, I think, the time of civil war that we were in, you know, unfortunate, you know, the 30 years, I mean, there was a lot of contribution by the female, uh, you know, I mean, uh, society. And it happens even today. I mean, if you take the garment industry, you find that, you know, they are the ones who are actively involved in it. Uh, so I think we need to come up with products and support uh, their, you know, uh, initiatives, which we feel is an area that we have not exactly focused on in the past, and it's an area that we will definitely focus going forward. Well, uh, I was going to ask you what the target areas that uh, you were wishing, but you now came up with uh, the yes. garment sector and all. But uh, Sri Lanka is a pretty uh, laid back country in terms of going into new new things and new things. How do you look at that? Like say, what are the areas you would want to target more to try and bring in the, uh, your products to uh, be active in the country? Well, I think, um, I mean, again, I think it's a very good question. Um, we can't be away from the globalization that is taking place, right? 
for us to be a country that competes and competes effectively, we need to embrace change. And we need to understand fully what is happening around us, so that is outside and inside. Transformation of people, mindset transformation has to happen. And that's an area that we are focusing on. And I think you need to be very open with stuff. And that's the policy that I basically run in the company. I think you need to be honest and open about, you know, capabilities, uh, as I said at the start, we have a, a great combination of youth and uh, experience. In some instances, we may have to look from out and you know bring people in to get the right balance. Um, and as I said, the mind mindset transformation. So once you start to open up and create dialogue, and you start you know creating awareness, people are quite receptive. I must tell you that you know I mean this perception that uh, you know when you talk about uh, the public sector you get this uh, feeling of, you know, I mean, slowness or, you know, I mean, lethargy, which I think is the wrong perception because I came from the private sector into a, you know, a semi-public sector operation. And I must say that the people I work with are immensely talented. They are hungry for change. They're hungry for development and social upliftment. So I feel that if we provide them the uh, necessary tools and the right direction that the company and even the country which has tremendous potential can uh, you know be at a different level altogether in a few years from now you think you'll have to have a cultural transformation in few years? oof <laughs> um well i think we have a very rich heritage and a very rich culture I think we just need to be a bit more adaptable and uh, that i think you can bring in with uh, as i said openness uh, and i think uh, the country does have the right qualities to go forward i i don't fully subscribe to what you uh, said, um, I, mean, I have to be very honest about yeah. it. Um, I think it's it's the adaptability to the technical, you know, the, the technology that we need to basically bring on board. And I uh, think our, our people, our Sri Lankans are extremely talented people. You know, I mean, we see a lot of our Sri Lankans in the tech industry. I mean, if you take the previous, uh, you know, I mean, areas like the health sector, the doctors, etc. Um, it's just that I think we need to provide them the right infrastructure and the tools. Uh, and the rest of it will just basically flow through. Uh, Shamila, how would you scale uh, your business and in what direction would you want to scale it in? Right, so the way I look at it is there are three pillars. There is a business pillar, there's a risk pillar, and there's a people's pillar. So investment will be basically onto those three pillars. Business, as I told you before, we will look at doing the right business. We will look at the niche areas which we haven't been, but we have the capability of getting in and doing well and we will invest on that. The risk obviously comes along with the business because that's what we are in, right? So we need to do the right type of business and price it rightly, rightly rather. And people, right? So how do you scale up a business? You need to have the right people. You have to have the right mindset. So you need to upskill the people. You need to invest in their you know, development, which is what I've been doing and which I feel is the most important thing. Because as I told you before, when I look at my team and I look at the hunger they have, and the capability they have. I mean, all of them are mostly, you know, coming out of universities, they have degrees, they have master's programs, some of them are even more qualified than me. <laughs> so I wonder why they are not CEOs and I am the CEO, to be very honest, right? Uh, so the, the ingredients are there. So the scaling up will come through the organic and inorganic growth plans that we have. Organic is the area that we are doing and what you're doing well. I think there is still more efficiency that come in, can come into that process. Um, and the inorganic, uh, area is looking at opportunities, right? I mean, if you look at what has happened in the last few years, and especially the last year or so, lots of opportunities in the capital markets. There are mergers and acquisitions. COVID itself has, you know, basically given opportunities for investing in areas that people never thought of investing before. But that's the way forward. So if we can take or rather make use of those advantages now, invest wisely, I think the scaling up will happen in no time. Uh, well, I think uh, this is going to be a tricky one. What are the strategies that you would want to use? Oof. <laughs> I think I'll have to give it in coded <laughs> language. <laughs> um, strategies. Okay, so as I said at the start, uh, one would be digitalization, right? So if I'm to just give you examples, again, today uh, People's Leasing is a company that signs documents on electronic signatures, right? We don't use wet signatures anymore. Now, why do we do that? Because if we have to restrict our movements tomorrow 
and face certain challenges it can be covid today and it can be something else you know in another years time or so even if you're working from home or any other place you know you can sign off on documents right without having to physically sign on the document and you know that means you need to have people to transport the document you need to sign it you need to send it back etc we also move into a paperless concept because we are very conscious about carbon footprint so what do, what do i mean by paperless we put some targets and we said by 31st of december we will achieve 65 to 70 percent where all our internal memos all our internal correspondence is no more on a piece of paper it's all on a default e-memo which we send up and down with the various approvals and whatever we need to basically get across what does that mean less paper being you know basically ordered less trees being cut you know more eco-friendly you know i mean the green type of you know approach and even the branches going forward we would look at as much as possible to use solar power to look at the reduction of uh, water wastage right so you have all the sensor tap and i'm going to the nitty gritties to right. just explain yes. the type of investment and thinking that we are now putting behind our entire branch network right uh, and uh, do we need big branches do we need you know because today digital technology means that you know you can do business from anywhere so typically my sales force they can work from home you know and they can travel and meet their clients from home and then send all their reports and whatever the you know information that they need to send through digital means that gets processed at the head office or the regional offices what are we doing about the head offices and our branch network well you know something that i learned from hsbc was hot desking right we don't need to hire buildings i mean i need to look at shareholder return you know i need to look at staff well-being as i said training and development so when you know there are other challenges you have to look at how you run your bottom line you know your cost line rather so we are going into a smart office concept at head office where there would be hot desking right and that would mean that you know you have 600 people but only 400 desks right because we are enabling them to work from home work on the run so which means they don't actually physically need to come into office so all of that would mean we reduce our rentals right so the wastage or rather the excessive spending on you know brick and mortar reduces and also we look at all the other operational matters so when you have documents going through digital forms you don't have to worry about you know courier services and you know storage facilities that goes with all of this so hopefully all of this the benefit of this would be seen and would be felt in time to come well uh, another thing that i would like to so when you take the finance sector in, and the leasing sector in sri lanka if you look in par with the other countries around the world where does sri lanka stand well i've had an opportunity to work in a close by regional country and i've had the opportunity to travel with the regulator and various other stakeholders uh, when we went on you know road shows uh, for investment purposes and i must tell you sri lanka is pretty much ahead of the game i mean although we think otherwise uh, we are very technologically advanced and uh, with things like you know the cashless payment systems coming through the qr system and uh, you know i mean uh, i think banks and even some nbfis have already started investing in electronic kyc right uh, i mean these are the signs of progress whereas some other countries haven't haven't even thought of it so i think uh, we are on the right track uh, i think in sri lanka in general very impatient people you know i mm-hmm. mean they see something and they get excited and they think you know we must do it but i think the regulator also is playing a very crucial role here in ensuring that uh, we do it in a very prudent manner right that we don't rush into something and then the fallout is you know quite uh, quite steep uh, well you launched a new uh, digital banking platform uh, yes. recently uh, shamin let's talk a little bit about how sure so well uh, firstly what i like to tell you is that it's a 100% home grown product i have a fantastic it team very competent and that just shows the capability of you know sri lankans so they came up and they developed this whole thing from a to z right um what are the features it covers financial transactions it covers insurance transactions 
and it covers lifestyle transactions. Now the thing about all this tech, and I'm sorry, I mean, I'm also quite, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not tech savvy rather, you know. Uh, uh, my son is more tech savvy than me. Uh, so what happens in this case is that if you, if you bring out something, it has to be simple. It has to be accessible to all, right? And I think that's where the whole concept was, or rather it was developed around that concept. So for example, now, you know, people find it very difficult to remember the account numbers in banks because they run into 12 digits, you know, I mean, it's like an American telephone number, right? Here, what you do is you just tell the remitter, you can send the money to people's bank or other to people's leasing and I'll give you my mobile number. So you just give your mobile number and the mobile number is synchronized to your account. So you know your mobile number in most instances, right? So you just give your mobile number as the beneficiary account number and the process basically synchronized to credit your account you know, and transact. You can buy insurance then and there. So if you go buy a vehicle or if you uh, purchase a vehicle before you take it out, as you know, it's by law, you need to have an insurance. You can just basically use the app and buy an insurance, get into the vehicle and drive because the insurance has already been paid for and it's all there in record. So, you know, I mean, um, then it's trilingual. It can be accessed by, you know, I mean, communities that are comfortable in speaking in Sinhalese, Tamil or English. And there are many more features basically that have, you know, basically been implanted in that. So we feel that's the way forward and that's going to be, you know, the tool that we are going to use to transact. Well, looking at uh, finally the, the success that you will look in another two, three years, totally different uh, um, from... Well, I want the shareholders to be, uh, or rather the company to be admired and the shareholders to be very proud of the fact that they are associated with the company. Uh, for our competitors, we want to be an example, right, uh, for them to emulate. And uh, for, you know, I mean, the regulator and the, um, uh, our custodian, the Ministry of Finance, uh, we want to be a, a benchmark, you know, a, a, a company that they can refer to as a model. As I told you, I want this to be a typical, successful financial PPP you know, a public-private partnership. 75% we are government-owned, 25% we are owned by the public, right? A perfect model for the country to showcase something, you know, that can be used as an example for others to follow. Well, I think, Shamil, that that's a very good uh, point that you brought because there's a lot of talks that uh, being privatized, uh, getting public and uh, semi-government and all that uh, becomes a, has become an issue like people keep talking, it might go into certain different, different areas. But uh, according to you, you feel that working in a company like this, I think there's no, no real problem of this. Uh, I, no, I don't think so. I think it's, it's again in, 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 you know, in, in the way you think and in the perception, yeah. right? See, there are a lot of people who stay out of the system and criticize the system, right? saying, you know, look at how the public sector works. I mean, I, my, my request to them is if you're so, you know, I mean, uh, fond or rather if you, if you are wanting the public sector to really improve and, you know, I mean, become efficient and, you know, I mean, agile, then why not you also get involved and, you know, try and do something, right? Because I'm bringing my experience of having worked for a multinational, you know, I mean, financial institution and sharing that. I don't have to worry about talking about leasing because I have my experts there. They will teach me about leasing, right? I mean, they are subject matter experts. They, will, I mean, it's leasing, finance, you know, what not. But what I'm trying to do is to guide them and share the best practices of an international conglomerate, a financial conglomerate, which I think is being taken up very well. And as I told you at the start, people are hungry. They want to learn. And if you show them the right way, if you're open, honest, and transparent with, you know, what we learned as courage is integrity. Uh, I believe, you know, that uh, the public sector also would, you know, be very much on board and perhaps might even be more efficient than the private sector. I think uh, these are very good uh, points that have been shared with us by uh, Mr. Shamindra Maslin about uh, people's uh, leasing, how uh, they have their workforce uh, and how they work things out with the public and with the new digitalization uh, banking platforms how easy it would be for people to access anything with just their fingertips. So I think that's something that we will be looking for in the new normal and the way forward. Thank you very much, Shamindra, for joining us. Thank you very much, Kosala. Thank you very much yeah. and very nice to have been here. Thank you. Yeah. Well, with that, uh, we come to the conclusion of today's episode of uh, Business Today. Hope you had a very good insight 
about a lot of financial points. So till we meet again in our next episode of Business Today, it's good night.